women business owners, they're starting to be more of them in the area, thank goodness. And that's great. And and you have a, sort of a group of mentors that have helped you along the way? Yeah, um, so I'm very fortunate to have a wonderful group of other female business owners that I'm you know friends with. It is primarily female, but you know, also I mentioned Spruce, Nick Giancola, Paul Hagman, Alexa Sweeney, Ellie Platt, like all of these women have, you know, are kind of like, you know, you lean on them and you, you know, you just kind of bounce ideas or I'm really struggling with this. And it's, you know, while it is social and it is friendly, we all have a, you know, passion for our businesses and a passion for growing, you know, what we're doing and also supporting the community at the same time. And I, I think I'd be remiss if I didn't mention Sarah Mon. She's a dear friend and, you know, her support throughout the years has just been incredible. If you were going to maybe write a book. On it's on my list. It, is it really? It is, yeah. What kind of book? A how-to book? Uh, I don't know. I haven't, I haven't figured it out yet, but okay. we actually just had this conversation at family dinner because we were talking about how when you read a biography about someone, like, I'll skip through the early years, like, I don't care how you grew up. I want to know about what you're doing now. Yeah. Um, so my dad was like, are you just going to gloss over all of that? And I'm like, yep, I don't care. <laughs> so no, <laughs> I'm just kidding. But yeah, uh, no, I, writing a book is, is on my list. I don't know what it'll be about, but it'll be about something. So I guess if you were writing a book about starting a business and what you did, uh, what would be like three things that do not do this and maybe three things that this is what you need to do to be successful. I don't know if I can give you three and three, but I can say for sure one of them would be having the ability to work on your business and not necessarily in your business. And so recognizing what tasks you can do that only you can do to move the business forward, as opposed to just tasks that everyone can do that are day-to-day -day tasks. And this is something that Morgan and I are kind of working through and like learning this sort of different mentality of thinking like, sure, anyone can do this, and then we're all done at 9 o'clock. Anyone can top donuts, and then we're all done at 9 o'clock. But you make TikTok videos, and those drive businesses. So is that, like, delegating, but more than delegating? I guess dele delegating and, re and prioritizing at okay. the same time. Yeah. So um, when I think back, like, I would make a point to go in every evening and, like, take out the trash and do this final check. I didn't need to do that. Like, I should have been doing other things. That might have moved the business forward. So I think, and I took, um, I participated in the SBA's, I think it's E2000, it's got a new name now, uh, Emerging Leaders program that the SBA puts on. And we're very lucky in Youngstown, I don't, I don't know if you know this, but Youngstown is one of the host cities and then the next closest one is outside of Pittsburgh, like south of Pittsburgh, and I don't even think Cleveland has one. But it's this program for business owners and it's like a 16 week course that takes place in the evening where you work on your business. You bring your own financials, you bring your business plan and you, you kind of fine tune these things. And everyone signs um, non-disclosure agreements so you can talk freely and then they put you into cohorts with you know, other people who are in similar places as you. It, like it, I can't speak enough for anyone who is looking to grow their business about that program. That does sound... Yeah, so it was great. So anyway, that my takeaway from that was working on the business, not necessarily in it. And you know, from that, we were able to see sort of a growth plan and put together like a five-year plan. So you have, um, you started this with your daughter. Yeah. Um, through her teenage and 20 years? Or? Yeah, so we opened, she turned 16 in March and we opened in April, so. So how has that been? Uh, so it's been great. All in all, it's been wonderful. And we have sort of kind of, she has transitioned and transformed like a thousand times over. So. Uh, never any of this or? Oh, sometimes. I mean, we're families and she'll tell you, um, or you can listen in our podcast that she says that I'm a yeller and she's a crier. And she, <laughs> so, uh -oh. <laughs> um, but not mean, just like, you know, expressive and loud. Um, <laughs> but yeah, so no, we definitely butt heads and, you know, I can think, I can count on, you know, less than three fingers, the times that we've really like, you know, come to blows or had some, you know, heated words about things that are going on. So, and does she have that sense that this is what she wants to do? Yeah, um, it was really interesting. So she obviously was 16 when we started and, you know, went to college and she's phenomenal. She went and did her senior year at YSU. So she did that uh, Senate bill program where she was in high school and also in college mm -hmm. at the same time. 
So she was fast tracked sort of in college to pick a major and do all of this stuff. And she's like, oh, I'm really interested in like science and, you know, working in a lab and that sort of thing. So I think that's great. You go pursue that. So she will tell you she actually moved to Cleveland for her senior year at YSU and worked at the Cleveland Clinic. Uh, it's a dual program that the clinic has with YSU. And she felt, uh, just a quick funny story, is she was like, I, I just want to try to not be one hot cookie. Like, I want to try and not be your daughter. I want to be my own person. Mm -hmm. Okay, that's great. So she goes to the, her interview for this Cleveland Clinic, and it was like a work study. So it was, it was more than just an interview. And she sits down and they say, so tell me about these cookies. And oh, she's no. like, Google, <laughs> no. <laughs> but um, so she's like, I just can't shake that cookie kid. <laughs> but yeah, so she moved to Cleveland and then realized that she really enjoyed working in the business, being in, you know, her and her fiance at the time, now husband, they really have a, a sense of pride for Youngstown and want to be part of the, you know, continued revitalization. So they felt that they needed to be here and she wanted to work in the business. So, um, yeah, she's still working in her field a couple days a week as well. So, you know, we're all kind of juggling lots of things, but it makes everything work and it's great to have her back here now. You uh, worked in nonprofit uh, mm -hmm. for a while and uh, you've partnered and collaborated with nonprofits including United Way yeah. um, a lot through COVID and with food distributions and with hospital frontline workers. Uh, give us a little sense of what you've done and why that was important for you and Morgan to do that. Well I mean I feel like once you've done nonprofit fundraising like your heart bleeds for those people you know how hard it is. But no, I mean, there is a, there's a sense of being a community partner. And I think that, you know, we have, as business owners, we have a, you know, obligation to do that. And I think that the nonprofits, especially in this area, you know, they really make up the fabric of who we are and they give, you know, character and heart and kindness to our area. And, you know, I'm just thrilled that we are in a position where we can partner and we can help and, you know, we'll do whatever we can when we can. You said really the community, um, I know you told me before, the community really has supported you in so many ways from the very beginning. Oh, yeah, it's crazy. And I, like I said, we've tried stores in other markets and just not had the response. So I think that there's something, you know, Youngstown believes in their own and fully supports it. So it, it's crazy. What's your ultimate goal for One Hot Cookie? Uh, well, we're continuing to grow, um, especially now with the website and the national nationwide shipping. So I think we're looking to, you know, grow our online business, increase sales. Um, you know, hopefully Morgan will continue to work alongside and then, you know, one day buy me out and it'll be great. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> what do you hope maybe Morgan has learned from you? not only working side by side, but through everything that you've gone through and that you've accomplished? Oh, well, I mean, like I think what any mother would want for their daughter, like just self-reliance and, you know, that sense of self and sense of independence that she doesn't need, while it's great to have, you know, a partner and a spouse, you know, you don't need that to, to accomplish big things. And that, you know, whatever you dream you can do, as long as you have the, you know, determination and, you know, wherewithal to pull it together. Thanks for watching the video. Be sure to like, subscribe, and hit that little bell for notifications. And also make sure to connect with us on Twitter, Facebook, and LinkedIn. For all of your business news, visit businessjournaldaily.com. For all of your arts and entertainment news, go to afterhoursyoungstown.com. Built for the 21st century American workforce, Eastern Gateway Community College has two campuses and is a national leader in online learning. EGCC.edu is a digital gateway where 30,000 students are quickly transforming their financial futures through degrees, certificates, transferable credits, and higher paying jobs. And now, residents of the Mahoning Valley can enroll in summer classes for free. It's the EGCC Summer Guarantee. Eastern Gateway, America's new workforce starts here.